A pleasant afternoon to everyone. I am Dr. Jennifer Serrano Flores, pediatrician, adult and pediatric asthma, allergy, and immunology specialist, and I will be discussing about the skin manifestations of COVID-19. This global pandemic caused by the SARS-CoV-2 is probably the most difficult challenge in modern medical history. Originally, it was believed to predominantly affect the lungs. However, it is now known that the virus affects many other organ systems almost simultaneously, including the skin. Cutaneous manifestations, a well-known effect of viral infections, are beginning to be reported in patients with COVID-19 disease. These manifestations most often are morbilliform rash, urticaria, vesicular eruptions, acral lesions, and lividoid eruptions. Some of these cutaneous manifestations arise before the signs and symptoms of COVID-19 manifest, suggesting that they could be the presenting symptoms of the infection. Clinical symptoms of COVID-19 include cutaneous manifestation. Hence, its detection is fundamental to prevent further spreading. This lecture aims to provide a description of the cutaneous manifestations associated with COVID-19 infection. First is the maculopapular rash. This may occur with or without pruritus and this was the most common cutaneous manifestation of COVID-19. It was present in 44.4% of patients with COVID-19. The mean age of the patients in this group was 60.4 years. More than half of the patients were female, and the most common localization of the lesions was the trunk. Although 35% of patients were asymptomatic, the most frequent symptom was itching, which presented in 57% of cases. This kind of rash is mostly observed in the active phase of the disease. This slide shows different maculopapular manifestations in published COVID-19 cases. Some patients showed perifollicular distribution with varying degrees of scaling and some were described as being similar to pityriasis rosea. Purpura was also sometimes present in punctiform in appearance, and a few cases showed infiltrated papules on the extremities, mostly on the dorsum of the hands that look pseudovesicular or resemble erythema elevatum or erythema multiforme. The second most frequent skin rash in COVID-19 patients was urticaria, which appeared in 18.6% of the cases. The mean age of the cases was 47.6 years. The youngest being two months old and the eldest was 71 years old. Again, females were predominantly affected and the rash appeared mostly within the active phase of the infection. This, again, was a published case of a 39-year-old female with urticarial lesions in involving her trunk and thigh. Her urticaria began one day after the onset of anosmia and one day prior to the onset of fever. Shortly thereafter, she was diagnosed with COVID-19 and has had a relatively mild disease course. The temporal onset of urticaria before the more well-known symptoms develop raises the possibility that cutaneous manifestations or eruptions can be a presenting sign of COVID-19. The third most encountered cutaneous lesions are the chilled lanes. Chilled lane occurred in 18% of the cases without any history of exposure to cold. This group had some special characteristics which made it different from the others. It mostly presented in younger patients with a mean age of 31.7 years. 
And again, females were involved significantly more than males. Moreover, in contrast to other cutaneous manifestations, which appeared mostly in the active phase, chilblain often presented later in the course of the disease, even after the complete recovery. Furthermore, approximately 10% of the patients were asymptomatic carriers of COVID-19 who had only chilblain and positive PCR tests as the manifestation. Its distribution was, as usual, in acral parts. However, the heels and toes were significantly affected more than the fingers. The most frequent symptom was pain as compared with other lesions which may have accompanying pruritus. Chilblain comes in several forms. They may be purple, red bumps, often involving the tops of the toes and sometimes the bottom of the feet. In others, there may be individual discrete lesions but rather redness or bluish purplish discoloration accompanied by edema of the entire toe or several toes. Vesicular lesions come as the fourth reported cutaneous manifestation occurring in 13.5% of the cases. It usually manifested like chicken pox, consisting of pruritic popular vesicular rashes involving the trunk or with localized vesicular lesions, which was herpetiform. Vesicular rashes were reported often in the active phase of the disease. These pictures show vesicular lesions presented on the trunk and consisted of small monomorphic vesicles at same stages of evolution, unlike the polymorphic vesicles in chicken pox. They may also affect the limbs and become larger or diffuse, same as the herpetic lesions. Levido reticularis was reported in 5.1% of the cases. It was a generally asymptomatic lesion affecting both genders almost equally. It occurs unilaterally, resolving in few hours without any treatment, in contrast with the usual bilateral distribution of the common Levido reticularis and which does not subside spontaneously. These lesions are thought to be secondary to COVID-19-induced thromb thrombotic vasculopathy. Here are some pictures of the transient libido reticularis in a 67-year-old patient who tested positive for COVID-19. And the last cutaneous manifestation of PTK, which was seen in only 0.4% of COVID-19 patients. This case initially presented with a dengue-like course. This was a published case of a 48-year-old man with a history of hypertension presented to the emergency department with fever for several days before admission. Patient had pleuritic chest pain and shortness of breath. He noticed the abrupt appearance of a slightly pleuritic skin lesion three days after the onset of fever. The mechanisms of COVID-19 cutaneous disturbances are not yet well known, but some common theories are prevalent. It can be postulated that the viral particles presented in the cutaneous blood vessels in patients with COVID-19 infection could lead to a lymphocytic vasculitis similar to those observed in thrombophilic arteritis induced by blood immune complexes that activate the cytokines. It can be postulated that the virus does not target the keratinocytes but rather immune response to infection leads to longer hand cells activation, resulting in a state of vasodilation and spongiosis. Further theories suggest lipid reticularis resembling manifestations 
can result due to the accumulation of microthrombosis originating in other organs, thus reducing blood flow to the cutaneous mas microvasculature system. Additionally, a posi-inflammatory thrombogenic vasculopathy with deposition of complement 5B9 and complement 4D is another theory that contributes to the cutaneous manifestation of COVID-19. We still have a tremendous amount to learn about the cutaneous manifestations of COVID-19, and more questions are still left unanswered. It is also important to establish if there are specific cutaneous manifestations that can be pathognomonic for COVID-19 infection. Thank you very much for your kind attention.